So here's a little video on the uh, Tesla after three years of ownership. Um, it's now done 116,443 miles. So what can I tell you? Right, well, so far on 116,000 miles, the only thing I've spent on it so far is four sets of tires. It's just had its fourth set two, just over two weeks ago. Um, other than that, nothing absolutely nothing and as you can see these are the original discs um so if i can get in a little bit better into there for you um, zoom in um there's just over half disc um pad like well the discs have got literally got no no lip at all so i say like no obviously a little bit of rust that's because they don't really use them that much. Um, so every once in a while I do a little burnish. Um, the pads say they're just over, just over half life left on the pads. Um, that's the that's the fronts. And then if we go around here, we we'll have a quick look at the rears. So we'll have a look at the rears. It gets same again. There's no lip. Um, just probably three quarters of life left on those that's it yeah roughly three quarters of life left um it's same front front and back something i did change on the uh, car um which was due to the fact that there was rattling was the wheel trims now they've been on i think it was about 70,000 80,000 miles and I had this noise as I was driving. I just wasn't sure what it was. Um, it was just rattling and rattling. And then I just happened to be cleaning the car. And I actually nudged nudged the um, things. And I realised that was what the rattle was. So I changed it and put these in. Um, but what I could also say is I would recommend probably taking those off anyway. Because over the time, as you can probably see... That the, where they've been wearing away, they'd stuck, they've taken all the paint around the edge where they've been rubbing. And obviously, I mean, I know I've got a little bit of curbs on here, um, but yeah, the, the, all the edge it started taking, started taking the paint away at the edges. Something else that I can point out regarding the car as well. Um, now, th this was reported to Tesla at around 47, 48,000 miles, um, as it was a known issue with these cars. At the, on this edge, this is a 2020 model. Um, and that was the, the upper control arm, which if I think I can get in here. Um, so let's get a better image for you. Which is that just here, this, this upper control arm. That, that was um, squeaking badly. Um, like every time you moved the steering wheel in any direction it was like real squealing it were only on the driver's side the passenger side still been fine so what i actually did because well i reported it to tesla but they lost my initial um booking for this apparently it, it went missing so that was a bit of a nightmare for me because obviously i'd reported it and they said I hadn't because when they come to do it again it was around about 52,000 miles um, I, I run this as a taxi um, so yeah we're around about it didn't take long only a few weeks and then it was say about 52,000 so then it was out of the initial 50,000 mile warranty um, but they said it was no detriment to the car so I watched another YouTube video um, and basically it's quite an easy fix if you jack the car up um, I'll probably do a video on this actually because every once in a while I have to do it again um, you basically just fill it with more grease and then that, that literally does resolve the issue um, but you do need to take the car up you can't just inject it with grease and expect to work because you have to like wangle the the joint around so that the grease re -lube, fully lubes around inside um, but that's, that's for another, another video um, so yeah so that was a, an issue I had um, another issue I had, um, which was around 15,000 miles, I had a new steering wheel in the car, and then I had another one around about 40,000, I think it was, um, 
and obviously now 116,000 miles you can probably see we're ready for another one um, but I think obviously it's our warranty so I'm going to um, get an actual new stitched wheel I think put on it um, but yeah I mean if you look inside I've ch I, ch I did change these mats which I can highly recommend um, it's got like a bit of the T on him from the Tesla um, the, the, these are really really good um, as you can see the seats the bolsters these are still holding re really well um, considering the mileage um, obviously you can look at the pedals the pedals are all still pretty decent the whole, the whole car other than other than that steering wheel um, oh there is these as well so where my elbow rests the newer cars um, a relative has the newer one they don't tend to do this but where you have your elbow um, there and then about to get the angle on it just here they start dinting in so obviously it's only happened on this because I'm in this car a lot um, but yeah other than that the, the rest of the car is, is holding up really well so oh actually that's something to, to point out while we're on here obviously with this mileage if you listen I don't think you can hear that clicking but that's obviously due to wear of age um, but yes, yeah, so if we open this back one, and bear in mind, there's a lot of customers getting in and out of this car every single day. Um, but the, the rest of it, if you look, it's still all really, really good interior for this mileage. Just have to give you guys a good a good look at that just so you've got an idea of what we're looking at. And then say inside I've got the rear floor mat also, which is actually really good as well. So if you've got kids or anything like that or any spillages, you can literally pull the mat straight out and away you go. about next um, the cost of running um, so like I say the only the only thing I've had on it is the tyres um, oh I have also had a st uh, two windscreens so the first windscreen I had um, which was around I think that was around it was around 85 90,000 miles it was after the first windscreen um, literally it was just a few days later my, my policy renewed luckily uh, a few days later I got another stone chip so I had to replace that again as well um, so literally within within weeks so that's why it's now this is the original then this is now the third windscreen um, but yeah um, when I originally picked the car up um, this camera wasn't working but it was a batch it was just a bad batch of them but that was all rectified pretty pretty quickly um, like I say if you look at the paintwork there's a few little stone stone chips I mean it's a bit dirty now but there's little marks with a few, few stone chips but in honesty uh, I mean some of these are bugs flats as well but there's another little stone chip uh, but yeah it's, it's holding up pretty well uh, I mean but that, that steering wheel is it does look bad it does look pretty bad Yeah, so back to the cost. Um, I mean, roughly, uh, this costs, it depends on the type you're on. I mean, I'm still on five pence a kilowatt at the minute. Um, you're looking somewhere between five and seven pound to, to charge, thereabouts. Um, now, distance that you get really depends on how you drive. Um, if you're a little bit heavier footed like obviously sometimes i get customers in that have not been in a tesla and any of you guys that are out there that know tesla they do perform exceptionally well um on power now if you're driving like that you're not going to get the same sort of distance as what you would be if you're driving frugally so normal for me i would say i get around 250 to, to, to 280 uh, miles uh, 250, 250 to 280 miles 
yeah so i get roughly 250 to 280 miles um on a charge but if you're doing a long distance um, so i i live obviously near Sherwood pine Sherwood forest um i can get from here to st ives in cornwall no issue on a full charge non-stop and i arrive there with 14 percent battery so it's pretty decent um the most mileage i've done driving it exceptionally frugal uh, was 380 miles or well, just over 382 miles um and yeah yeah it was no issue at all um so you know the, the, like i mean if you had a motorbike you wouldn't get to you wouldn't get to cornwall for <laughs> for a full tank of thing which is what 12 13 pound of today's rate so when you think you can drive in a tesla all the way there for that sort of money is is insane to be honest um so it's good makes it really good um as a taxi you know as you're not you're not doing the mileage um what else can i say the the um obviously the, because there's so little maintenance to be done on on this car it makes it re- like exceptionally good if for, for, as a taxi also um or for anybody doing any sort of long distance because it's less downtime you know you're not you're not out having to be every te- like as, as a normal combustion engine I, I would have to have an oil change every ten thousand miles um i would also be doing the brake pads every like Fifteen thousand, because obviously with us doing stop start, stop start all the time, you know the pads wear out really quick. And for every second set of pads, you'd be on a, a set of discs. Um, so yeah, with the mileage I've done now, it would have been what probably at least ten sets of pads, about ten sets of pads, and about five or six sets of discs all round. Um, so yeah, that's that's an, another huge benefit to have it to go in fully electric. Um, is the much less downtime and then also with this sort of mileage um, running it stop start you know town driving you would be having um, DPF if it were diesel obviously DPF would be going now EGR valves um, water pump cam belt changing all that sort of thing that you would now be experiencing at this sort of mileage I've, I've now not got um, so another another huge benefit um downsides now there isn't many really that i can think of off the top of my head um other than obviously at the minute there's a tax there's partly the reason i'm doing this video is works quiet for us taxes so i've still got that expense of the car now i bought this car you've seen 2020 it was uh, 50,500 to buy obviously they've gone up in price a little bit now since then uh, but 50,500 it has got the tow bar option with mine which was a thousand pound extra um the, the the payments um for me is 613 pound a month now i have that to pay whether i make a, anything in taxi or not um pre-covid being honest we did really well now we're not doing particularly well at all um but that it, it is where it is <laughs> um, but you know to be honest with with that mileage that it's done the car's basically paid for itself now if i was in the petrol car the pre-covid i was doing 200 250 pound a week in diesel and that was when the price of diesel was two uh, 1.5 per litre that last time i bought diesel 1.5 per litre in 20 with the beginning of 2020 um now the amount of money you would spend or i i would have spent on fuel from between that and the mileage i've done now would have been more than oh i don't know what would it be it'd have been it would have been probably pretty much so 200 250 pound a week it was around you know thousand pound a month just just on fuel so a thousand pound a month wait, 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 yeah. Come in, so I'm gonna go drive to go and get that. So yeah, so the the fuel spent was around you know 250 pound a week, so a thousand pound a month thereabouts. Now I say the car cost me 613 a month, so I'm all automatically straight away better off every month by a few hundred pound. And the other thing is that money what I was spending on fuel 
it's dead money. There's nothing to show for it at all. Whereas at least putting the money into a Tesla or any other electric car, you have got something to show for your money. You know, I mean, I could talk all day about this, but it's uh, it's one of the things. Um, but yeah, I mean, like from a customer's perspective as well, or you know, you, they're so roomy inside. You know, obviously, if you look back on the video and you look at the floor pan, it's all completely flat going across, um, which you know gives everybody even the person sitting in the middle a nice decent foot space to sit in whereas most of your other cars they have that big bump in the middle from where the you know the um, tra gate transmission goes through the exhaust so you don't have that in one in these um charging is never an issue either i mean on tesla like network it's uh, roughly let's see what it is what the price is now as we as we are today so in newark today it would be 38 pence per kilowatt scrantham's 35 pence per kilowatt um i think that's peak time here as well at the minute so but yeah that that's that's the sort of prices whereas if you look at like i'm on, i have bp pulse where well, i used to use bp pulse because it was a lot it was quite cheap at the time um but that's now about 78 pence per kilowatt you know it's more than double or around about double the price of what what this is um if you're if you're with tesla direct so but i mean if you can charge at home then obviously do do that do do charge at home because it's a lot cheaper uh, or can be providing you're on the right electricity network um Would I go back to a combustion engine? Not unless I win the lottery <laughs> for a supercar or something, you know, and even then it's like the power of these. I mean, this is the long, the Tesla Model 3 long range uh, with the acceleration boost. Now, obviously I drive steady and careful, etc. but any of you guys have got a Tesla, you know, you, if you're jumping onto a motorway or a dual carriageway, you've 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 experienced, you've tested out that acceleration and that pull is there's nothing really much that comes close. In honesty, there isn't. There's not much that comes close at all. Um, but you know, if you was doing 50 mile an hour and a McLaren pulls up alongside you in the boot, it, you, he's not analyzing you every time. Um, because of the power. I mean, I'm going a bit beyond here, probably instead of McLaren, but an Audi R8, if you were side-by-side -side standard at a set of lights, Tesla, that's all I'm going to say, <laughs> Tesla. Um, but, you know, when you think that the performance edition is a little bit quicker even than this, it's just mind-blowing, that, that how much power, and then you think of the new Model S Plaid, it's twice nearly almost twice as fast as this one on a 0 to 60 time it's, it's unbelievable and with all that power you do that in a mclaren like up to 60 70 mile an hour you've chucked probably three four five i mean if you own a mclaren you're not bothered but you probably chuck three four five quid out of your exhaust just by getting up to that up to 70 mile an hour by going it's uh, you know on acceleration whereas this you've spent not even a penny to do it so you can have all the fun you know depending on your use case you can have all the fun without the expense um, some of the things I other issues I did have um, at the beginning I mean I don't get any issues now but my screen a couple of times went just went black as I were driving down the road and obviously that's your speedo etc um, yeah it just went black it just like crashed um, I've never said that it did a software update and never had that issue again. Um, other issues I've had, um, other than the Tesla service at the time, I mean, I don't know what it's much like now, um, but yeah, that, that was annoying. That was annoying, you know. It was at 48,000 miles, I wrote a string of things down obviously the door card the steering wheel because it, it was ready at that 48,000 began to be honest um, then sort of things to be done and the, and the upper control arms to be replaced when it's a known fault those things should have been done under warranty 
you know even now at this mileage it should still have been done under warranty um, I'm still I'm less than 120,000 miles which is for the batteries and the um, so for the batteries and the motors so we're still just just in warranty for those but you know if them up the control arms that have been replaced when it was a known issue they'd still be going strong now same a relative has the newer version of this which that has been taken care of so if you're looking at if you do watch this video and you're unsure them things have been rectified on the new models these door cards have been rectified on the new models they're using but they're using better quality um, materials on the new one um, the also the new one to this has got the heat pump this is the 2020 model this doesn't have the heat pump the new ones are a little bit more efficient again but you know, depending, if, you're, if you drive frugal and you need to go a long distance and you, there's literally no worry about range anxiety in one of these. If you're planning the trip to Amsterdam, it will tell you exactly where to stop along the way. I'll be honest, I've not done no long journeys such as Amsterdam or even, even taking it across the water as of yet. But I would have no, qualm, no problems at all in, in doing that. battery range so obviously with the mileage I've done now some of you might be thinking well what is the range life of these like I say it was only about four five weeks ago I did the trip to Cornwall again and I went in this car my missus uh, we have the Audi Q4 she was it's only the short well the normal range the 35 the Q4 35 she had to charge twice to get to Cornwall and I did it non-stop. Um, granted, she probably had a, little, a lot more weight than I did, but even if I did, I went, I'd drive with 14% battery, so I still, even with a bit of extra weight, wouldn't have been an issue. Um, for, for, I still had a fair bit of weight, but obviously not quite as much as what she had. She had the, the, our daughter and um, her sisters and her sister's partner in the car all at the same time, so she had a full car whereas I just had me and loads of stuff to take with us um, but yeah she stopped twice and because she wasn't in a Tesla it wasn't as easy the first one she got to she was waiting I think about 35 40 minutes to get onto the charging station and then when she did like it was 79 pence per kilowatt to charge um, and it wasn't as fast to charge in either so that's just another another thing to think about when you're looking at the other cars um, like the new Skoda Enyaq is pretty nice but I, like depending on your use case if you're not doing lots of long distance then it's not really too much of an issue but if you are going to be doing long distance regularly then I would honestly look no other way other than Tesla at the moment until comes a time when they open up that network to all to all cars i mean i know there is some of the stations now that have been opened up to all but there's not enough there's not enough yet um which to me actually is a great i'd rather them not open them up because if they if another car put like the mercedes, the mercedes um c eqc that charging point on that car is on the opposite side so if they use one of those bays it blocks the control of the, it blocks the um it blocks two it blocks two of the um bays so the big pothole just went through um, yeah it block, blocks two of the bays the you know, the one they're on and the one to the to the other side of it so realistically you know elon tesla you know you need to look at something to make it so that when people come onto these bays they could park either side of the um of the charging station so that then it could be it doesn't matter which side they are you could just go around the other side and all charging stations can be used at the same time um yeah so i had somebody coming to, towards me on a one-way over a one-way road <laughs> So they were coming towards me, I was wondering why they were, but yeah. Um, so, what else can I say? Like, the, the boot capacity. Now, before I had this, I had the um, Insignia, Vauxhall Insignia Estate. 
reasonable size boot um, in that, but literage capacity-wise, this, even though it looks relatively small, it's got a pretty big boot. Um, you know, you can fit two large suitcases in the boot, no problem, and a cabin bag in the boot. You know, because it's, it's got a false floor, I'll show you that in a minute. I'll, I can't do it obviously while I'm driving, but when I stop I'll add another video in, you know, showing the boot and its capacity, etc. Um, you have to excuse it a little bit because there is a bit of a mess in there at the minute, so just have it as a, just a storage of like the polishing cloths and materials and whatnot. But um, yeah, it's a reasonable, it's a really good sized boot, but the downside is, is, is the opening capacity. It's not like, because of the obviously the type it is, it's not, not a massive, like, deep boot. So, you know, if you add, that I have some customers um, in wheelchairs, I can get a wheelchair in no problem, but if there was two wheelchairs, like two separate, I would struggle, because you haven't got the height. Um, but, you know, that's, it is what it is. So, if you're needing this, the capacity, or bigger boot, then I would look no other way other than the Tesla Model Y, which is what would be my next upgrade if, when, if and when I come to change this car. I will go for the Model Y because um, that boot is like, I'd say probably two and a half, three times the size of the, of the boot that's in this. Um, and that's like for, for doing airports, etc. You know, that will, would be ideal. But when I bought this, the Model Y didn't exist. I mean, it's just just wasn't available otherwise that would have been sorry dodgy road here no road marking so the car was wondering what was going on i'll talk about that actually in a second and um, yeah so the, the boot capacity in the model y is, is second second to none it's, it is it is a huge huge boot um now another huge benefit to this car is when you are doing long distances the autopilot is great like well, I'm not sure to phrase that. Sometimes it's great. Um, if you're on a motorway, works no problem. If you're on the backcountry roads or you know, relatively decent road, um, it'll work okay. It's not so great to go around. This is the thing too, they did an update and where it was better before, it was used to be better than what it is now. But when I first got the car, he did a lot of the phantom braking where like even on the motorway you would pass a lorry on the um, little screen in the car it looked like the lorry was coming into your lane so this the car would break and um, i believe now they've kind of rectified well they have rectified most of that doesn't tend to happen but it doesn't seem to maneuver round bends as good as it used to it still does it okay but there's times when it's been very questionable you know as to as to why it like took it wide when it could have definitely done it when I've known it done it in the past and took it perfect. Um, so yeah, I, like I say, that could just be another update. It did an update recently, I've not tested it since, so it, that could have been rectified now. But yeah, it's um, the autopilot is, 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 is really good. I mean, if you're going long distance, you're doing a Cornwall, you're going up to, you know, from you know, the Midlands to London, motorway M1, M62, M25 in traffic, it's really good. Um, obviously, UK laws, you still have to touch the steering wheel after every, you know, relatively shortish distance and time, um, just just to tell it you're still awake, basically. Um, but when you're just sat here, obviously, with my dint with my elbow, just resting on here, it works good. It does work good. You're, you're there, you're ready to take over if you need to. Um, that that's a, a good, it's a good feature to have. Um, the Q4's got the um, adaptive cruise control. Shit. <laughs> By comparison, being honest, it is a bit shit. Um, if you put it on there, I mean, it's not obviously designed as an autopilot, but if you do do it on there, you'll feel like you're going from one line to the next line, and you're just like batting and fuck backwards and forwards along the road like a ping pong ball. Um, it's like that pong, pong game, it is. Um, yeah. That, that's not that good. Although I do like the heads-up display in the Q4. That's pretty pretty cool to have, the, especially for the sat-nav system. Um, a question I got asked a lot when I first bought this is, what was the transition like from having the dash in front of me to being just off to the side on that screen? 
Now, when I picked this up, it was in Leeds. I'd probably done 20, 30 miles. I'd say about 30 miles. Um, and I was used to it. It was like, it's still in your peripheral vision. So by the time you've done that much, it's, you're used to it. Um, and also it's better having it there because when you've got that dash in front of you, you know, it's sitting around about the height of your steering wheel then you've got to, you you're not realize it probably straight away but it, well you will realize it when you get one if you get one of these but you probably won't realize it from your own car but you've got such a much bigger windscreen you know you've got a lot more visibility because you can see more because the windscreen's bigger because you've not got that dash sticking up in front of you um the the the, you know, the the sat nav is so i mean if you can't follow the sat nav in a tesla you shouldn't be driving it is so so good of a sat nav um to, to, to be following it is um yeah yeah that's great it's also nice to have all the spotify built in you know you don't need a spotify account you know that is that is all part and parcel of the car the you know the karaoke not used it loads but i have had customers passengers in on a night you know as a taxi working in the night where they wanted to sing along to a bit of karaoke customers love it you know friends family they, they all like it when they go on a trip my little girl when i go to pick her up can we go in your car daddy <laughs> because she loves she, she loves aim she's only two and a half and even she loves the loves the tesla she does so i think that will conclude this video for now because i'm just about to pick my customer up um well, yeah, yeah, the uh, the car, it's great, absolutely great, no regrets at all from me, not as of yet anyway. Oh, that, what I can do say quickly is about the, because um, I did briefly look, they had the 0% on not long ago on the, um, Tesla, on the Tesla Model 3s, and I thought about potentially upgrading to the same car, which is newer, just because it's got all the heat pump and newer interior, etc. But when I first bought this, I could have sold my car within weeks and made a six, seven thousand pound profit. Being even though I bought it brand new, just because of the waiting time. Now this car, I, like I think I got offered like was it nineteen? Granted, it's got this sort of mileage on it, but it nineteen grand. But I still owe, I think it's twenty on it. So they're not particularly holding well on trading value now but i would get probably about another four or five grand more you know, on a sale so i'd probably get 25 so it's lost half of its value in three years but obviously with the mileage i've done it doesn't matter because you know my electric bill for what i'm using is like what seven between 70 and 100 pound a month to use it as a taxi whereas like I say, it would have been 200, 250 pound a week if I was using diesel. So about you know, the, even though I've got a massive hit on the value of the car, I'm not that bothered because it's 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 earned its money. Um, and if you're doing the mileage and you're saving on your fuel, so you, you know that that is the the thing at the moment. You know, I mean, the Tesla to me, it's they're becoming so popular. It's almost like the new it's the new Mondeo. Um, it's just popular so but I mean, there's so many of them now it's not they're not hard to get hold of so you know that's what it's but obviously dragged the price down of the of the used teslas now so but yeah that's just something worth mentioning right i'm gonna go because my customer's here i'll catch you short on just to show you the uh, inside of the boot um it's a bit dark but that should bring it in to give it some sort of light there we are and then like i say about the false floor lift that up and you can still fit another full size cabin bag actually fits in there no problem at all um and then you do have there is a obviously the front the front boot as well um which well, you might get a cabin cabin bag in there Open that one up. you might get a cabin bag in there but it's a um It'd probably be a little bit tight, but yeah, I just have my obviously first aid kit, warning triangle, fire extinguisher, charging cable. Um, I'd recommend one of these, um, the tyre plugger. So if you get a puncture, you can just plug it yourself, no no problem, um, to get you out of jail, and obviously get it fixed when you need when you can. Um, 
and obviously yeah, just just charging the stuff really. Pump. So that was a good one. Um, I think they've changed that now. That location of that. I think it's down down here somewhere. But yeah, on the on the newest Highland one. But yeah, that pretty much sums it up, guys. Sums it up. Um, would I get another one? One hundred percent. Yes, I would. Definitely get another one. Um, again, just to show you on, on another wheel regarding these wheel, wheel trims, where you can see where it's taken all the paint away. So it's a bit of a bit of a flaw on them. So, and it doesn't. I mean, they say it gives you a lot more or quite a bit more range, but being honest, it's it's negligible. And on day to day, it's it's nothing. Um, if you're doing a long one, you could just suppose chuck them on for that long journey. So, right, 